Welcome to a new video. So in this video I'll be making Cinderella's maiden dress or at least a modern adaption of it. I really loved this dress when I first saw the movie and I knew I wanted to make it one day but I guess this is the closest I'll get to making it. So it's also based on Ella's mother's dress which is a floral cotton day dress and it seems to be Victorian era inspired since it's got a wide neckline and pleating in the front of the bodice and then a very um, full skirt. And this is the material that I'll be using, it's a lightweight cotton. So this is the pattern that I used as a base um, and I was following view C which has, um, well I did gathers but in this picture they are um, pleats or tucks so mine looks more like that with gathers, um, yeah, very, very small gathering, which looks almost like small little pleats. This is a historical pattern, so the um, shoulders are very wide because they are supposed to have padding inside them. Um, but I just changed the, sh the, the width of the shoulders um, based on another pattern I have. I actually based the shoulders on this pattern, which you would have seen me use um, before. This is the Vogue vintage pattern. Anyway, so basically I used this pattern for the pleating as well as the side and back pieces. Obviously I didn't have the little collar and I didn't have the sleeves. For the skirt, I just cut out uh, really big rectangles, about three of them I think, and then stitched them together and then pleated them, not pleated them, gathered them down to the waist measurement and then attached them to the bodice. So yeah, this is, um, this is my first time using this pattern and I actually bought this pattern because after watching North and South, I really loved Margaret's um, dress, the white dress that she had that looked like this and I wanted to make it. Um, yeah, so this is sort of like a test run for me of this pattern. So it's not difficult, it's just very finicky and because the silhouette is so different to modern day clothing, um, it can be a bit frustrating if it doesn't really look right without, you know, the historical undergarments like the corset and petticoat and all of that. So um, I was using this pattern as a base but I was modernizing it as I went along. A few more things I should mention is I didn't have an, a back opening, I instead changed the opening to the side, had an invisible zipper inserted in the side and if you're curious the size that I used is size 12. Um, yeah. So obviously you need to start by cutting out your pattern pieces from your fabric. I'm laying over the modern pattern piece of the bodice over the top of my historical bodice piece to try and get the shoulders and underarm uh, part correct. Um, when I say correct I mean it fits more modern it has a more modern fitting on my shoulder rather than the dropped shoulders of the um, historical costume pattern. I'm also cutting out the bodice side piece um, which you can see here. It's got a very uh, sharp and defined point and, and that's the point that um, tapers down in the center front of the bodice. So I did keep that aspect of the historical costume the same, um, but I didn't um, keep the shoulders and sleeves the same as the historical pattern. I'm also cutting out my pattern pieces on this white bed sheet material. It was just an old bed sheet, so um, it's a cotton and it's good for lining, so why not use it, right? 
and same again for the bodice side piece. After cutting out my bodice pieces, I've got front bodice pieces, back bodice pieces, uh, side bodice pieces, and then the front overlay, which is where the gathers will be um, on. So I'm marking out my darts on the lining fabric. So the original, when I say original, I mean historical. <laughs> the historical pattern calls for boning channels to be made um, from these dart, these dart pieces that I'm sewing now. Um, but since I'm making a modern adaption of the dress, I decided to not put in boning. So I am still sewing the darts, I'm just not going to reinforce them with boning. I think what I did do for the darts is I top stitched on them and was hoping that that would provide the bodice with enough structure and I think it did. The cotton that I'm using for the lining is not a super lightweight cotton, so it does provide that um, support and structure. So now I'm moving on to the bodice overlay piece and marking out where my gathering lines will be sewn. So this uh, gathering line guide that I'm following now is part of the historical pattern and there's about seven or eight lines, gathering lines that you need to sew. I might have sewn maybe 10 or 12, I can't really remember um, because I am taller than the average person so my torso is longer as well. And then I'm just sewing all those gathering stitches down so I made sure to um, have a very long stitch length so I set that to the highest it can go which is about four I believe on my sewing machine and then for the tension I only discovered this when I was doing this project so usually when I do gathering stitches I set my tension to zero the the least amount of tension that it can possibly have hoping that that will gather nice and easy but in fact, I've actually found out that sewing it with a tension of maybe two is best because then the fabric doesn't gather immediately and you have more control over how much you want to gather when you pull the threads afterwards. Anyway, um, here I'm sewing the side bodice pieces to the front bodice piece um, and I'm also including the lining in that as well because I've decided to flat line the whole thing and once that's done I move on to gathering the bodice the front bodice overlay so um, as you saw before I sewed the gathering stitching and now I'm pulling those gathers and trying my very best to make them as even as possible and also make them fit the bodice lining part, the underlay. So this took a little bit of time to get right, but um, it's, an, it's an interesting technique and I've never done anything like this before and I just really wanted to try it. Um, that's one of the things that really intrigued me about Cinderella's dress is that the uh, gathering or pleating on the front of her dress. So Cinderella's dress, dress has um, a very small cartridge pleating and every time I saw that in the movie I was just thinking the amount of time and effort that would have been uh, put in to make that uh, just that front panel of the dress and the precision that would have been needed to make it look that perfect um, just really interests me and I wanted to have a go of, of it myself, um, but I wouldn't have had the patience to do the actual proper cartridge pleating, so I decided to do the gathering, which is more like Cinderella's uh, mother's dress. So trying to fix up those gathers, make it as even as possible. This is really hard, and I had a lot of threads breaking in this process, which made it more frustrating, but it's all a learning process. And then sewing the edges of the lining to the 
rest of the bodice. So before the lining pieces were only sewn at the um, side front seams and now I'm just sewing the edges down, so flat lining the whole bodice. And here is the overlay piece, so laying that on top and just to give you an idea of how I did the gathering so it would match the under bodice piece, I just pinned it, I didn't actually sew anything down. So in this stage here, I'm actually sewing the bodice overlay piece to the actual bodice. So sewing all of that down and I'm also stitching in the ditch along those two uh, front seams. And here is a close-up of the gathering. And what am I doing here? Hmm. I can't work out what I'm doing here. I'm doing something. What am I sewing? Oh, these are the back panel pieces. So I was sewing in darts, I believe which ended up being like very large tucks or um, just completely sewing the back uh, like the back darts into whole straight seams since um, the back was way too large for me. So on the historical pattern I'm assuming that the back is supposed to be um, quite poofy but I wanted mine to be a bit more tailored and uh, modern fitting, so that's why I took in the back by quite a lot. And then you just saw there me cutting out three really large rectangles for the skirt. So I just used the remaining fabric that I had left. I mean, why waste it? <laughs> and now I'm sewing the side seams of the skirt, I believe, am I? No, no, I'm sewing in the zipper. So this is a new technique I tried out, which is to sew the zipper um, on one side of the dress along with the skirt panels, but do not attach the skirt panels to the actual bodice. So the way I've done it in the past is I've always attached the skirt to the bodice before sewing the zip, whereas this time around I tried it um, sewing the zip to the bodice and the skirt, but the bodice and the skirt are still completely separate. So the reason why I did this is apparently it helps you align the waist seam um, because you know when you sew in a zipper you want the waist seam to match on both sides of the zipper. Um, so I tried it out uh, it, it took a little bit of getting used to, but I think it was fine. And I also added a pocket into the skirt as well. So this was a pocket that I actually cut out for one of my other projects and then realised it didn't match. And then I redid the pocket for that other dress and then I had this spare white pocket laying around, so I used it for this dress. Um, so once the zipper is sewn in, I went ahead and sewed the other side of the bodice and the side seams of the skirt, which I'm doing here. Yeah, I'm sewing those side seams of the skirt. skirt ended up being so much fabric as you can see and I was struggling to find where the top uh, seam of the skirt, sorry not seam but the top of the skirt would be where I need to gather down the fabric. So I eventually found that and then I started gathering down the top of the skirt in sections, in small sections, so there wouldn't just be one whole line of gathering stitching. So I did it about eight times. Uh, and I did double rows of stitching, of gathering stitching along the top edge of the skirt 
so I could pull this, both of the stitches and it would give me nicer gathering than if I was to just have one gathering stitch across the top. So this was a little bit fiddly, um, mainly because there was just so much fabric to gather down into such a very small waist, um, but I did manage to get it done. It is a lot easier when you have a very fine cotton like this. Um, I wouldn't recommend gathering gathering something so large down to something so small with a thicker fabric. Um, you would just have way too much of a hard time trying to do it and way too many threads breaking. So once all of those gathers had been positioned, I sewed them all down to the bodice and I went I took my time with this um, because I didn't want any of the gathers to go all funny. I want them to lay all nice and even. Finally, for the first test fitting, um, as you can see the back was way too large, so I decided to take in the back and I think I also decided to sew the skirt a bit higher up on the waist as well, especially in the back since it drooped down in the back a bit. So I went away and did that. So here I'm pinning what, uh, what fabric I need to take in in the back of the dress. And you can already see there on the back, center back, I've already taken in quite a lot. So you can just see how big the historical pattern um, is for the back at least <laughs> and I also sewed down the skirt to sit a little higher on the waist and then for my next fitting um, I was pretty happy with this fitting apart from the top. The top seemed to uh, gape quite a bit, but I think at this stage it was a bit too late to change anything to the top, especially since the bodice had already been lined at this stage. And I didn't mind too much. This, this whole project was just an experiment for me. Um, yeah, just to play around with some historical uh, patterns and trying to make them a little bit more modern. And then here was my next fitting. I was a bit more pleased with this one and I think this was what I ended up being fine with. Um, as you can see the bodice would look better if it had boning and I was wearing a corset and all of that jazz but I'm not and I won't be so yeah. And then I'm just sewing a narrow hem all along the bottom of the skirt. Um, the skirt did end up being a lot shorter than I wanted it to be. Um, I was having a lot of trouble trying to even out the hem of this skirt. Um, unfortunately, I don't have anyone who can mark the hem while I wear it. And what I was trying to do was just mark the hem by eye while it was hanging. On a coat hanger off a door so that's that and um, here I'm just sewing some self-made bias tape out of the cotton lining fabric and I'm just sewing that to the arm holes and the neckline and that will finish off the top of the dress and here's the finished dress so it's not 100% what I was hoping it would be but it all was a good learning experience and I got to try out some new techniques that I've never done before. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and please leave a comment as well down below your thoughts on this and if you ha are planning on doing any projects inspired by history. See you next time.